What happened here is horrifying. Why it might have happened will leave you incredulous. She was just a good girl. Tina Meyer of suburban St. Louis is the mother of Megan Meyer, who had lived a challenging childhood. She got bullied in school, and uh, she had uh, big self-esteem issues. She had struggled with depression since she was in the third grade. Megan's mother and father allowed her to set up a MySpace account under their supervision and said their 13-year-old swooned when she got her first affectionate note ever from a boy named Josh Evans. He thought she was really pretty, posted on her comments, on her pictures, you know, this is beautiful, your eyes are beautiful. For about a month, Josh sent her instant messages saying things like, lucky me and lucky you, because you are my number one. But Megan's mother and father started getting suspicious, because although the notes were not explicit, their parental instinct told them something wasn't right. I did contact the police department, and I called and went, asked to be transferred to the Cyber Crimes Division to see how can I check to see if this MySpace account is real. Nothing you can do. And then one day... It was a whirlwind. It was Josh saying horrible things to Megan, Megan saying things back to him. Nasty messages from a boy who just a day before meant everything to this lonely girl. One in particular cut deep. The world would be a better off place without you and have a shitty rest of your life. Megan was distraught beyond words. This is the part I'll never forgive myself for because she, um, she was looking for me to help um, calm her down like I normally always did and be there for her. And I was upset with her because I didn't like the language that she was using, and um, I was upset that she didn't listen to me and sign off when I told her to. And um, so I was aggravated with her about that and told her that she knew better. And um, she just said to me, you're supposed to be my mom. You're supposed to be on my side. And she took off running upstairs. It was too quiet for too long in that upstairs bedroom. Tina left, walked upstairs. I didn't really pay much attention to it. Um, and then I just heard a blood-curdling scream. I just saw her hanging from her closet. When she just screamed, I, I was right to, there. Um, I tried picking her up. I uh, picked, held her, and I yanked the whole closet thing out of the wall, and Tina ran and got a knife so I could cut the uh, belt from around her neck and then started performing CPR. She had tears the entire time running down the side of her face the entire until she passed away. <laughs> Just it's like, please. Please, Megan. Breathe. Megan was pronounced dead the next day. When Ron Meyer came home from the hospital, he wanted to find Josh Evans, let him know what he had done to his little girl. The first place he tried to look was Josh's MySpace page. It was uh, deleted. The whole Josh Evans no longer existed. A month passed as the Myers struggled with their grief, searching for answers why their daughter went to such extremes and who was the boy who drove her there. Then a neighbor told them something stunning. Josh Evans was actually the creation of a mother who lived on the same block as the Myers. A mother who actually went to Megan's funeral. According to an official police report, that mother acknowledged it. The report saying, in the months leading up to Meyer's daughter's suicide, she instigated and monitored a MySpace account, which was created for the sole purpose of communicating with Meyer's daughter. The Meyers were told the other family wanted to find out from Megan why she was having a dispute with their own 13-year-old daughter. As if, if my daughter would have killed herself with a gun, they loaded the gun for her. We are not reporting the name of that other family to protect the identity of their daughter, but did go to their home to try and get their side of the story. Is anybody home? The woman's father answered the door. In a soft voice, the grandfather said it was sad, but then would not say if he thought the police report was wrong. Have you talked to these people since then? Yes, I have. And what have you said to them? <laughs> Probably things that I can't say on camera. And what have they said back to you? Give it a rest. Give it a rest. Now at this point, if you're waiting to hear what law enforcement is doing in an effort to get Megan and her family some justice, well, you may be waiting forever. County prosecutors, the county sheriff's office, and the FBI 
say there is no indication whatsoever a crime has been committed, so there are no plans to do anything legally. After initially telling us they weren't even investigating the case anymore, the prosecutor is now telling CNN his office will review the situation. But more than a year has gone by since Megan hanged herself. Tina and Ron Meyer, who have separated partly because of the stress, were told by lawyers it was best to stay quiet. But they no longer are. They are angry and feel they owe it to Megan to speak out. Maybe your story could help the welfare of another child. Absolutely. That's what we hope. Gary Tuckman, CNN, O'Fallon, Missouri.